If you're thinking about how you're going to raise money for your building project, that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Over the last 20 years, I've worked in and helped many other businesses raise money for their building projects to either start their business or expand their business. And even just recently, I've got several clients who are about to be asking for money or have just started the investment process of getting fundraising and have also closed investment rounds. And so this is a good moment to talk about what I'm seeing and some of the things I might suggest as you go about this. The first thing that I'll say is that if somebody is investing money, their job as an investor is to find things to invest in. So it's very easy to feel like you need them to come in and help you bring your project to life. And you know it, it can feel like you're asking for money when in reality, you could look at it as you're offering them an opportunity. And it's the same with any sort of sales process, really, where if you're just offering something that is helping them reach their goals, it doesn't need to feel sleazy. It doesn't need to feel like you're sort of begging, borrowing, and pleading. Like That should not be what this is, because for the clients I work with, they're doing really cool stuff. They're doing projects that really matter to them. They're doing things that are changing the lives or helping benefit the lives of their users as well as their investors. So you are genuinely offering something. And I think that that's something that's easy to miss, especially for those of us that aren't used to asking for money or aren't used to sort of having a sales conversation with people where you're trying to understand what they're looking for what you're offering and just seeing if it's the right fit where something might come together where you're both excited. So just the biggest thing I would say is that just remember that you are offering something to the investor as well, because it shouldn't feel like it's that one-sided. You are offering something even if you don't have the money to back up the project entirely. The second thing is that you probably already have almost what you need, if not already having what you need to go and have some of those conversations with investors. And I don't say that lightly because you do want to be presenting your vision in a way that makes sense. In my case, I always recommend having a vision and a narrative. What story are you telling? The compelling story of the future that you're trying to create. Visuals that can back that up and the numbers that support it as well. So you're sort of taking people from the idea at the highest level, all you're trying to do is get them to ask more questions, get them to that next level. What's the idea? Okay. What could it look like? Okay. Does this actually work? You know, you're just sort of moving through and depending on who they are, they might want to go deeper into different areas, whether it's the development side, uh, on the building side or the finance side or op whatever it is, they might have their own flavor of what they really care about. So you want to be prepared to answer those questions. But at the same time, the bottom line is that you're going to make changes as you figure this out. Unless you've got it really polished, chances are you're probably going to have initial conversations that make you either think about the thing that you do need to create or do need to polish so that you can answer the questions for investors. Because sitting in your own sort of bubble and doing it can be really hard because you might think that there's this one thing you need that really may not matter at all. So I do think that there's a lot to be said for going out with a sort of minimum viable product that you're trying to shop, get input on, see what people really care about. You know, an investor, if they have a particular concern, it might change dramatically in terms of what it is that they would recommend you focus on or just how you end up going about bringing in other partners or different things like that. So my point is, is that from what I've seen, it's a very low likelihood that you are going to make this thing so tightly knit and so perfect in a vacuum without talking to other people. So just like finding real estate, you just kind of have to get out there and have these conversations. And with that said, I would say having conversations that are already warm, meaning with people who kind of already know you, might be able to offer not only potential investment, but constructive feedback, you know, before you talk to complete strangers, that's probably a great idea. But my point is, is that you're probably closer than you think to being able to have those conversations. And by putting it off, you're not really helping yourself move forward. So I do think that pulling it together, giving it enough of a polish where you can present it as even as a, a sort of 
preliminary pitch or whatever, however you want to look at it, but getting it out there, getting feedback, especially from, you know, sort of friends ish or people who may be one circle removed from you. That's not a bad way to get going. And usually from what I can tell talking with people, they're closer than they think. The third thing that I'll mention is the type of investor that you actually want to bring in. I've had people who are trying to raise money from a lot of different people. And often when it comes down to writing the check, they don't do it. And I think it can be for a lot of different reasons. And I think at the beginning of investment conversations, people are often way more sort of positive and yeah, of course I'm in, I'm in. And then when it comes down to it, are they actually writing the check? What often ends up happening is you'll find one or a very small group of investors who really gets it and cares about the same things that you do. And this is why I like working on projects that really matter and with founders that really care about what they're doing because there's a story there. There's a, an experience that you're looking for an investor who either understands that, has lived it, or at least knows enough about it to want to be a part of what you're offering as a, as a solution, as a vision for the future. And this is the same thing as in real estate where certain landlords just aren't going to care about what you do. You have to find the right fit. The word fit is what I use in so many different areas, because if you don't have the right fit, you're not going to find the right person who can really help you pull the whole thing together and make that investment and you know get you what you need to get going. But when you do find the right fit, they can be a real partner, not just money, but they can be a real expert and advisor in helping you get where you need to go. And the last thing I'll say is that that anxiety that you're feeling, this book, Life Enhancing Anxiety, is a book that I recommend a lot. And there's a quote I love. It's the very first quote, and it's, freedom and anxiety are two sides of the coin. There's never one without the other. And that's from Rollo May. And this is really the key, is that that anxiety that you're feeling is a sign that you're doing something cool. You're doing something that is, it may be new for you. It's definitely challenging. That anxiety is a good thing. It can really become, as a client of mine referred to it, as the potential energy for what's next. It can be crippling and debilitating too, if you let it. But if you listen to it and try to think about what is that anxiety telling you about the thing that you do need to finish before you're ready to start talking to people? Or is your anxiety actually just getting in the way of pitching a package that you already have? It might be good enough, might have been good enough six months ago, let alone now. Whatever the case is, you cannot let perfect get in the way of just actually getting on with it because otherwise we're never going to get anything done. And that sort of ability to actually get things done, actually make the pitch is going to be a huge part of your success in terms of raising the money and also getting a project over the line. So those are four tips that I've seen very recently in conversations with clients who have recently closed money, uh, are looking to bring in money, and even thinking back over the last 10, 20 years, working with different companies who have had very different types of investment, very different types of investment groups from individual owners, our individual investors, to private equity, to more sort of venture capital back. So my point is, is that these are just some tips from conversations recently, and I hope that's helpful for you. And if it is, I'll see you in the next video.